Hey guys. Uh, I'm Drew. I'm the presenter for this. Sorry, I'm like late. I, I woke up later than, than I wanted. By the way, guys, for you, you being here at noon on a Saturday, you deserve a frickin' medal. Because this is way too early on Saturday. <laughs> Seriously. Um, so, uh, just to give you guys some background on me, I started a company here about two years ago called Bloomsoft. Um, I do mobile development, uh, both for my, uh, myself, so I make my own products and put them on the App Store and make money on them. And then I also um, consult for other people. Um, and so I offer services, I also do training occasionally. Um, so, I did this out of, um, I had to stay here because my then girlfriend, now fiance, um, is a PhD student. And I graduated from the School of Informatics sooner than she was able to go. So I was like, well, I can either leave and like get a job somewhere, or I can just stay here and start a business. So I decided to do that. Um, so I actually did this out of a uh, necessity to uh, uh, to sort of stay here rather than uh, rather than just to become an entrepreneur. Um, but I, uh, along the way, I learned a lot of stuff about um, other people who are kind of doing the same thing, starting small shops and making money on them, making good money on them. Um, and uh, there was, I, I've, I've heard a lot of noise from people lately in the tech community like, well, I can't make any money unless, unless I do a startup and I work 60 or 70 hour weeks, or I, uh, I have to go work for a big corporate entity or do consulting or something like that. Still kind of the same thing. Um, and, I, and I know there's a different way, and I wanted to kind of tell you guys about this today. Um, so this kind of all started when I got a call from a, a student in, uh, can you guys see this okay? Is this too washed out? I'm going to turn off the lights so you guys want to go to sleep. <laughs> now, is it cool if we just do that? I, just, I, I feel totally. Like, thanks. So, Maybe. it started about, uh, about last, no. so six months ago, I got a call from a... Nope, wrong one, sorry. That was cool. <laughs> Almost a down. <laughs> that works. <laughs> that works. Okay. Yeah, works. kind of. Yeah. We get that, yeah. Cool. Just okay. keep it off. Keep it off, we're just gonna, we're gonna play it by ear. All right, that's fine, that's fine. You guys can see this, right? Okay, good. So I get a call from a CS student, and uh, she's like, hey, I, uh, I'm really smart, and uh, I, uh, I'm in CS, and I'm getting, um, I'm getting some offers from some, uh, from some companies in Silicon Valley, um, and uh, I don't really, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I should join a consulting firm or do a VC thing, but I really, uh, she said, I really want to, uh, to start my own company. And, and this was sort of the underlying theme, and I'm like, well, why don't you do that? She said, well, I don't have any startup funds, and I don't, and she said, um, Sorry, I'm kind of off slide. I said, well, I don't want to do the fundraising thing. I don't want to do the VC thing. I don't want to have to go out and do all of that crap. I don't want to do a team building thing. I don't really like working with a huge group of people. Anyone who's worked in the team project and has always been the one who's doing all the work will understand what I mean. Um, she didn't want a long-term commitment. So she didn't want to jump into something for two years and then find out, oh, it's not profitable and then have to be stuck there. Um, and then she didn't want to give up her, her 20s. Totally fair. No one should have to give up their 20s. And she didn't want to go broke. Uh, and I said, well, that's, that's fine. I'm, you know, I'm kind of uh, doing this myself. And she had this idea that, listen, I can't, I can't do a company unless it's a startup, um, or, and I can't make money unless I'm with a big company or another startup. Like, that's not true at all. You can do just fine on your own um, with what people call, uh, not very nicely, a lifestyle business. Um, so I just kind of define what I mean by modern startup versus a lifestyle business. So a modern startup is uh, focused on getting big really, really quickly, like taking over a market however they can, not necessarily fo focus on profit, just getting big. Um, their early efforts are usually fundraising related. So even if they have a prototype or they have a, a strategy, they're usually trying to get money from someone to get bigger. That's almost always the goal is fundraising. Um, they want to partnership with, uh, partner with investors, so they want to hook up with people who are gonna give them money. Um, and then on the flip side of that is to give them insight into the industry and often connect them with people. Um, they are looking for injected growth um, rather than organic growth, um, and the expectation is sort of long hours. Like they're going to have to be, it's metal testing, and they're doing 70 hour work weeks, and that's all they're doing, it's all they're thinking about mostly. Um, but also, sort of the side effect of this is it's more difficult to change direction. Um, whereas a lifestyle business um, is focused on sustainable, profitable growth. Right away, you have to be profitable. I'm a person who has an apartment, and, uh, and I need to eat. I can't do that with equity, <laughs> so I, I want to, to make money right away. Um, they uh, are self-owned often and self-funded, um, so they're not looking at sort of partnering with anyone else. They want total control over the direction. Um, they're organic growth, so they grow sort of over time um, as they make more money. Uh, there's no expectation of hours, so there's sort of the four-hour work week, which I kind of think is bullshit, but 
worth mentioning. Um, that where the guy basically says, you can do your own lifestyle business, you can drop ship, and you can only work four hours a week, which, yeah. Um, and then it's also much easier to train, change direction. And um, kind of something to know, oh, that's way up at the top, it's fine. Um, the modern startups often make their money through acquisition at the end. They are focused on exit. I talk to VCs all the time who are like, I do three month gigs and then I want to exit, I want to get out. I don't want to hold on to this company, I want to, I want to get rid of it where a uh, lifestyle business is not necessarily focused on that, that you can exit. I sold companies and products um, to other people. They're focused on steady earnings. They want to make money month over month, because they've got kids, they've got an apartment, they have a mortgage, whatever. Um, and something, kind of give uh, a little bit more light on this. Steve Jobs <coughs> hates modern startups. He hates the, the three month, six month churn, pump it out, dump it. He, his business was a little bit more akin to a lifestyle business. He refused early investment, and he told he told people to, to off if they if they weren't doing something that was in sort of his vision. Um, and it took him longer to get there, but now he's got one of the most profitable businesses in the I mean, prior to death, one of the most pop, profitable businesses in the world. Um, so he was really not a fan of this. I don't take this stance. I don't think it's bullshit that someone wants to do a startup, I think that's fine if you just want to do a three month gig, work your ass off and get out, I don't care. Um, but this is not the case for everyone, not everyone wants to do that, and that's sort of the audience that I'm, I'm trying to talk to today. Um, so, how much money can you make as an indie, right? Sort of the question everyone has. So I did a lot of research prior to becoming indie, after, before quitting my job, to find out how much other people like me were making. And I emailed people, I talked to people on Twitter, I surfed websites, did all of that to figure it out, and there's sort of a range. But most people, within their first or second year, are making within the six figures. Um, most people that I've talked to. So, this is Amy Hoy. Uh, you can see at the top, this is Amy Hoy 2010. This is her in 2010. Amy Hoy is well known as sort of a vocal, maybe too vocal, proponent of lifestyle businesses with quotes. She has a product called Freckle, which is a time, time tracking tool. Prior to doing that, she was a consultant, and she would bill out at like $500 an hour, it was insane. Um, and these were her first two years with products and services with Freckle after going off of consulting. So 2009, she was doing okay, she made about 80 grand on it. And then in uh, 2010, she leapfrogged that. She made a lot more money. Um, and actually, recently, and I'll jump to this in a second, but just to break this down, Freckle, is her time tracking tool, her product. She made 32% on that. Everything else is service related. So 30%, 32% of her income was based on a product. The rest was on services. So consulting services, training, workshops, anything where she's going in person, and her hours are tied um, to the amount of money she's made. Now, in 2012, and I just recently found this on a Hacker News post, uh, someone asked the question, hey, I don't want to, basically the same thing, my premise. Hey, I, don't, I want to do a company, but I don't want to risk my 20s, and I don't want to work for a startup. And she said, that's fine. Uh, last year I grossed $600,000. So this is now, she's now doubling, more than doubling what she'd done the year before, and I know she's doing less on service stuff, so she's making more money on her product. Um, so even then, she's, she's doubling growth, and she said she plans to be within uh, 1.5 million by next year. Um, and she's 28, 28, I think. Uh, sort of the, the flip side of that are these guys called Shifty Jelly, who are a mobile development shop in Sydney. Um, no, no. Um, and they, uh, they're two guys, two full-time developers, Android and iOS, and then they have a, uh, two designers part-time. They I get off, I often ask the question, Are you, aren't you guys all millionaires? And they said, no, we have been losing money for six months. We almost couldn't pay the rent. Now keep in mind, caveat to this, they were only doing product. And they have two guys who are full-time and two guys who are part-time. So that's four miles to feed in some capacity. Uh, also, they started, at the end of this article, you'll find out, oh, but we started making money uh, <laughs> after we switched to services. So as soon as they started doing consulting, they started to make money, now they're profitable. Um, this is DHH. DHH is, um, I have to mention these guys, because this is ridiculous. Uh, 37 Signals is a company in Chicago that does productivity tools. Um, if you guys at all have been following sort of startups, you've probably heard of these guys. These are the outlier, many people call them. Um, they started a product called Basecamp. It's been wildly successful. So successful that David Heinemeyer Hansen, one of the stakeholders, um, purchased an absurd race car uh, that was called the Zonda HH. Not strictly legal in the United States, can only drive it in Italy. Uh, fun Hacker News posts, DHH is this rich, and someone, I think Peter Cooper, um, 
Answer is, yeah, I project that, they, uh, that this car costs between $1.5 and $3 million. And he apparently, there was a rumor that he had to buy a villa in Italy just to, just to drive around Italy, but that's not true. He writes. So, <laughs> so they, this is sort of the upper end of the echelon of the sort of lifestyle business. I mean, this is a guy I emailed and, um, directly. I'm not going to say his name because I didn't even ask him to send this stuff back, and he did it. This was a guy who's like a goofy professor type, computer science, um, and he started his own business like way before it was popular too, like in the mid 90s. And uh, I'm sorry, late 90s. Um, he was never focused on making money. He makes um, uh, productivity tools that are, you know, a market that's completely saturated. He doesn't do any kind of marketing at all. He's a terrible business mind, at least according to him. He says this later in the email. Um, but he said, this was his month or year over year earnings. Um, keep in mind, he does iOS, Cocoa, like Mac stuff. Um, so I can't, I can't remember where I put it, but I think this is when the iPhone SDK came out. So 140 was the year that the iPhone SDK came out. Um, but the other years, he had a very slow progression. He wasn't making a whole lot of money. He had a full-time job, keep in mind, but he wasn't making a whole lot um, until sort of a few years in when he started you know, um, uh, catching his traction and then uh, started making money hand over fist. Um, and now he's doing very well. This was 2010, I think, I emailed him. Um, and so I think he's probably at least in half a million, maybe in the million range. Um, so there's a whole range of people who are doing this, a whole range of um, approaches to get there. Um, but if you are someone who's business focused and you're talented at something within technology, um, you can make very good money. Um, and I won't report my own numbers. I was, <laughs> my, my fiance told me I was going to do this. I had a slide prepared showing my month over month. And my, and my fiance was like, you better not do that. Because <laughs> I don't want you reporting to people uh, on camera what, what, your, what our actual earnings are. So I didn't do that. So anyway, so how do tech focused indies make money? Um, and we kind of talked about this already, but just to rehash, products and services basically is a um, products, uh, the great thing about products is the revenue is not tied to hours work. In other words, you can make money while you sleep. I, when I went to Yosemite with my then girlfriend, um, we were hiking in the mountains and I was getting a ton of support emails. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I realized that my app was featured in a magazine somewhere, and that day my sales just spiked. So while I was hiking in the, in the mountains, I was making a ton of money. Um, and doing nothing in, uh, to, to, to make that money. I think I sent a few support emails back, and that was it. Um, so I was able to make money without having to do any kind of work um, tied to that money. So you, revenue's not uh, tied to hours. At the same time, you have to put in this upfront investment of time and money. And you don't really know how much money you can make. Some products don't make anything. I've had products that I've worked my ass off on, and they didn't make anything um, until I sold them. A lot like the sort of startup thing, didn't make money until you exit. Um, then there's services, and most people make their money this way, including, and I, and I noted the Amy Hoy 32% with her products up front, and then the, the rest of it with services, because most of her money was coming from services. As much as she was like a product, product um, uh, evangelist, really her money's coming from services. Um, the great thing about services, expectation is steady work. You're going to make um, steady money based on the hours you input. Um, you work with clients directly, which has positive and benef uh, negative side effects. One is usually you're supposed to mark more markets if you're indie. Uh, a lot of times you're working from home and you don't talk to a lot of people. Um, but at the same time, you have to deal with sometimes some loopholes. Uh, but your income is uh, negative to that is your income is tied to the hours of work. So you have to work in order to. Um, so just some examples. I really don't need to do this, I think, because you guys pretty much get this. But products can be physical. They can be software. Um, they can be resources that you sell. I know people who make awesome money just making WordPress templates and selling them on theme cores. Tons of money, like really, really good money, better than I'm making right now. Um, you can sell tutorials and videos. I know people who do this, they do training. So they make uh, what's called Treehouse, and prior to that, Personify, and they just make videos and sell them for high production. They show someone how to do like HTML or CSS or graphic design or whatever, and then they sell them. Um, and because their hours are not tied to the amount of money they make, I, I call this a product. You can also license products, and I've done this. Um, you can license code. Um, there's a guy in town, oh god, I'm gonna forget his name, I feel awful. On Twitter, it's Brain of Steel, and he um, does, he just does these little games, and he never really made money on the games, but people kept approaching him, hey, I want something just like this. Can you do this and then just put my graphics in? Great, sure. And he makes tons of money on licensing the software. 
Um, and that's kind of also goes between the services thing. But services include consulting, contracting, and subcontracting, finding work, and then delivering it. Um, this can also include training and workshops, um, where you come into a place and you, and you do training and, and make money on that. Um, and then product support, which is significant if you have something like, uh, a lot of people do an open source product, they give it away for free, and then they sell consulting on it. And they make a ton of money doing that. Uh, it's especially sort of at the enterprise level, big companies. They shake in his head, yes. Uh, so how can you become an indie product service emperor? How can you go about doing this? Uh, so sort of the practical stuff first. Um, consideration, savings. I'm severely risk averse. Um, and I actually saved about two years worth, which is totally unnecessary, so I was profitable day one. Um, but I recommend a year's worth of savings, just to give yourself some leverage. Um, caveat to that, mom's basement. Don't need any money, you can just you know, live off of mom's computer and earn that right, it's not much money. So that's a great way to do it. Um, insurance, I didn't need great insurance. I don't have great insurance, um, but it's something to consider if you have health issues. Just make sure you have your, your stuff in order for that. Insurance can, can cost a lot of money if you're solo, or it can cost not much at all if you do what I do, which is just like incidental insurance, and then I can go to the doctor every once in a while and get a discount. But other than that, it's, it's not great. Um, there are some people when they do the full blown insurance can cost like 20 grand a year, which is too much for me. Uh, but just keep that in mind. Um, and then there's retirement and other obligations. If you have debts, you gotta figure that out. Just make sure you have a, a you know, cushion for that. Um, retirements, I, I like to put money into my Roth IRA, etc. You don't have a 401k, you don't have your full time job. Um, so just sort of money related stuff to keep in mind when you, when you do this. Um, and I would recommend putting it all on a spreadsheet and just going through and figuring out, okay, what am I gonna look like for a month? And be realistic about it. Don't be like, oh, well I could be cheap and I'll only spend $1,500 this month. Make sure you know what you spend now and are frugal with, and then map that over to, to what you'll need. Strategy, get an LLC and get a lawyer. Um, it's not as expensive as you think. It's probably, I did mine with like $1,500 and there are people who can do it cheaper. Um, it's important to, to protect yourself. Uh, if you guys have been following the App Store stuff at all, there was there's this concept called being Lodesys, where someone, uh, there's a company which will send uh, notices to you that says, hey, you're in um, uh, patent infringement. We have a patent on this, and then they will demand money from you for a cut of your, of, your, of your company or of your product. Every single person who was named in the early Lodesys cases were obviously people who did not have an LLC. They were individuals named no LLC associated with it. It was, uh, and and it was obvious that those guys were the most vulnerable. You don't want to be vulnerable ever. You don't want to show your belly. So make sure to get an LLC, make sure to consult a lawyer if you're going to do this. And, and that's pretty much at the time when you've got a like product kind of or consulting kind of, you need a lawyer. You need to get one. Um, never work without a contract. Ever, 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 ever work without a contract. I could go on for hours about this. And in fact, this guy does, Mike Montiero, in a great presentation called Fuck You Pay Me. And he, um, he, he's with his lawyer, Gabe, and they talk about all the things that clients do to goofy stuff and all the ways that people don't get paid for the work they complete. So make sure to get a lawyer, make sure to always have a contract when you're doing kind of work. And then start small and grow slowly. A lot of people jump into this and they get a partner right away. And sometimes that works great. I've never experienced that myself. I've always had, if I've had a partnership of three, one guy always sucks. Um, if I've had a partnership um, of two, it's often gone well, but we usually are in the same skill set. So the problem becomes, oh, well, we don't need a developer, we need a designer. Um, and so now we have to go pay for one, and then there's two of us who have to, you know, who have to live off of, of the amount of money we're going to make. So it becomes kind of a goofy situation. Um, uh, with the Shifty Gel, who I mentioned earlier, where they had four people, that's their problem, because they, they jumped in too quickly with too many people. Um, if you're going to hire people, hire contractors. Contractors are great, because you can fire them at any point. Um, I usually put a provision in the contract that says, we'll do an early vet of your work, and then if it's not good enough, you're out. They don't care because they're paid anyway. Um, and then vet your partners. The vetting process is making sure that they're going to be able to do the work. Again, I actually, on a recent partnership, I had a guy Best guy in my in my full time job, who was like um, he was well known in the company. He came up to me and said, "I have this idea. I'd like to work with you on it." He was a strong developer, um, and then totally did no work on the project. It was me and this other guy, and he just like 
drifted along and then was like bitching and moaning when, when it came time to actually for him to do work. And I wish I would have vetted him because he has now a 30% stake in the company, which I basically built. Um, I'm producing all the revenue on He's just sitting back and taking a cut. So make sure to vet my partners. Had I done this again, he probably would be getting 15% or even now if he'd be kicked out from the partner. So, so make sure you do that. Lifestyle considerations, these are important. Um, there's good and bad side to this. So the great thing about um, going indie is that you never have to answer to anybody really. Um, except, well, obviously, the answer to the client, but you don't have to get up in the morning and go somewhere. You don't have to have your boss come in and then, you know, hey, how's it going, TPS report, all that. You don't have to worry about that. Um, you don't have to, you can wake up whenever you want. Um, flip side to that is that you totally lose your regimen. I, until a month ago, was working until 4 a.m. and then getting up at like noon. And I was just a mess. And <laughs> some people are happy with that. I am not. So just keep that in mind, is that there's good, good and bad to that. Um, like I said, you don't have to sort of uh, uh, other employees coming in to sort of bug you. You don't have to sort of office politics you have to deal with. But at the same time, you guys can't read this, but basically it's just some of the social skills degrading over time getting a deep. Um, you will lose these skills. You'll become, uh, <laughs> you'll become less social with people when you go out. You'll notice that you won't be able to, <laughs> to speak as well as you used to be able to. So, Make sure to do something about that. I go to co-working spaces so that I can work with other people every Friday. Nobody ever does any work. Everyone's talking the whole time because they're so giddy to see other people. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, also, this is something that I just recently figured out. I can't believe I was so stupid not to realize this before. You can work from anywhere when you're in Indy. Anywhere. Amy Hoy, coming back to her, she works, she's currently somewhere, I think she's in New Zealand, leading the day in New Zealand. She's working like in Austria and in Australia and Cambodia. She's everywhere. And she can she can work from anywhere. She just pops out her laptop and there she is. Um, and so she rents, because she makes so much money, she rents just villas everywhere and then she just hops around and does that. Um, and she does product support from there. Flip side of that, she's on a beach, she's working. That's awful. She doesn't have a beer in her hand, she's, she's on her computer. What a terrible situation to be in. Um, so, <laughs> so keep that in mind. You can work from anywhere, but you're still working. The philosophical stuff. Um, so this is sort of the, the stuff you've got to know because this isn't for everyone kind of thing. One is you need to have care and you need to practice. You need to care about the thing that you're doing or else it's just not going to work. It will not work. Um, and you've got to practice that. You've got to try to get better. You have to uh, look at your stuff and realize it's not good enough and then try better. That's it's that's that simple. That's all it is. Um, be a finisher. Don't be the business guy. Don't be the UX strategist. Don't be the social media meow. Make sure that you're a person who's finishing work and shipping it. Um, work with known markets. This is something that I didn't know that I didn't think about. Make sure you're doing something or a market that you understand or you have access to. Um, and I'll get into that in a second. 